anyway, and maybe this it's perfect timing for you as far as like moving forward. Are you have you kind of ruled out bull riding? Yes, sir. I've kind of ruled out bull riding um, just because like I know what I need to focus on, and if I get if I you know if I break another wrist, now I've broken both of my wrists bull riding. <laughs> If so, if I break, if I like, you know, quote unquote broke. <laughs> Let's see. I want to see these X-rays. <laughs> I was supposed to get Go time. Got to get her on down the road. Welcome to Rodeo Time podcast, the the Rodeo Time podcast room, where we are not sp- sponsored by Ozarka. What do you think about that, Cheech? I think. Right now, I'm not in the best of just moves to really talk to right now. You shut the air conditioner off, and this is terrible. And you're having to you're having to do a podcast during lunch. We shut the AC off, and I just threw your water on the. You ground. said you were cold. I was. I am. Nobody cold. cares if you're cold. They care if we're hot. I'm, and plus, my face is going to look like it's going to be like. We can turn it on mid podcast. Thank I goodness. I don't see what the problem is. You're with that. getting a lot better. I wasn't the only one that was with. cold. Who else was cold? Donnie Which was cold. was cold. I wasn't cold. Donnie? That's chilly in here. Donnie you... was cold, and then it's nobody really here. cares what Nick feels like because he's an intern. And he still no has offense. the same cast. Nick, that cast kind of smells a little bad. No offense, Sorry, Nick. I've been sweating. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'm glad that you're willing to negotiate. I like negotiation. I like to negotiate. That sounded harsh. It's not that nobody cares what Nick thinks. It's Bill, that his you... vote is worth half. So Donnie and I both no. voted it's cold. You the voted only it's hot. The reason that you're saying that is Nick's because it's half a vote. So it's 2 so to 1.5. That's the only reason that you shut the AC off even knowing you didn't care if Donnie was cold or he what I he heard was him say, say he was cold. Is that true, Donnie? I did say that. Yeah, well, the thing about it is is that your only reason that you're saying that now you're sounding like a general politician right now. His vote only counts for one and a half. So everybody else just has to go we just have to do it this way. It doesn't work like that in real life. Man, that's where you're that's where you're messing up cuz you're in the Dale warehouse. This isn't the USA house. This is a dictatorship. It's not a democracy. Oh, it's a dictatorship. It's a, it's a you know, Dale tatorship. Dale tatorship. Do you know what has happened to the past dictators of the world? Miramar Gaddafi, Saddam Hussein, Hitler, Stalin, I'm, I can keep going Mussolini. all day. Okay. Mussolini, yeah. What happened to him? Some of them. They didn't all kill did Stalin, themselves. Did Stalin, I don't think, did Stalin end up like that? I think he just died. No, we just went ahead and told him that if you keep messing with the USA, the great US of A, we're just going to run through Germany's tail, and then we're going to go right on up to Russia and go ahead and destroy your face, too. Okay, well, if you keep messing with Dale Brisby... What? Oh, uh, what? Yeah, what? exactly. Oh, well, hold yeah. on a second. I'm sorry the AC's not on. We're not here to talk about you and your sweaty armpits. I don't have sweaty armpits. We want to hear from Nick. <sighs> Nick is What do you want to hear from me? Nick has been here for a minute. Yeah, I know, and that's what we're going to talk about. Everybody is interested. What What do you think about all of it, Nick? You've been an intern for a month. Ain't, it been, ain't it been a month? It's been, yeah, probably, yeah a month. Four weeks. Okay. Uh, so, gosh dang it, what'd you do? Tell me what your thoughts are. Surprise. What What has surprised you? What has not surprised you? How um, you feel? Well, um, I kind of found what I like to do, which is just ranching. Yep. And um, of course, like learning from the greatest cowboy of all time, <clears throat> I'm at a great spot to learn how to, you know, get handy. And um, eventually, one day, be able to go and work somewhere or um, do what I really enjoy, which is ranching. So, you um, did you not expect to want to ranch this hard? I didn't expect to want to ranch this hard, but like now, I'm like, all right, all my chips are on the table. I'm I'm full sending it with the ranching. Yeah, because I'm taking you this evening to learn how to shoe horses. Yes, guy. That's really wanting to ranch. If you want to, I mean, mm, we'll I'm, see. I'm we'll really see. excited about not, it. You may not, you may not like it after you get into it. I mean, like I may hate it, but I'm excited to learn and try it out. Yeah, horseshoeing is. I mean, that's honest labor right there. Yes, sir. 
You got to have a strong back. I think you could do it. I'm yeah, just dude. saying, like, it's one of those things I believe that a guy has to do for a, for a certain amount of time before he can put a firm yes or no on. I yes, think. sir. It's so labor intensive. So, what do you think about shoeing horses? You ever tried to shoe a horse? Yeah, I used to trim my own horses, and then I decided that I had a strong back and an even stronger mind, and decided that this is not the way for me to. Uh, save money yeah so (laughs) but but seriously though like if you if you do not mind hard work yeah so like if it is if if you are sitting at your own house and it's a saturday and you find yourself like you're okay with just balls to the wall hard work yes sir um like that kind of like you're moving cross ties you're doing you know heavy lifting you're rearranging your barn your feed room like you unload a pallet of you you move a pallet of feed just because you want it on the other side like if if you're like that kind of worker i think that it could be for but but the other thing about chewing horses is though as uh i got a few friends that shoe horses and you gotta uh, like it's a skill set it's a it's a trade and it's a trade that is going to be around for as long as there's horses around you got to be able to do that well, not only that but you got to have it up here because you got to have hand eye coordination uh you got to understand what you're looking at you got to understand uh you know horse feet the way that the, the, the anatomy of a horse horse's foot and then uh got to put it all together because there's a difference between somebody just uh taking a double lot or not and just hot nailing it and quicken it on there because you can uh, really ruin a horse's foot and really ruin a good horse if you uh, just not paying attention. And and so I think I would never ever 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 when you find a horseshoer, it's like finding a doctor. That's just, that's that's it. Like you don't ever tell them how to do their job. You just let them do it. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's who I'm. I'm taking you to one of the greats. But, golly, you can you can make some money. You can stack up some money. What? Like, gosh. I mean, you trimming. How long did it take Corey to trim to to shoe those four horses? He shod three horses, and and then he trimmed Boone. Yes, sir. He um. Well, he was there for about three hours, and I mean, or four hours, and then he was you know. Hanging, hanging out, out with, yeah, with us out, too yeah. so he wasn't just like i, I want to say three hours i think it took him three hours and that's with him hanging out with us that's 340 bucks yes sir now so, he also you know he also manages a ranch doesn't he yeah he does he doesn't like full-time shoe horses anymore he's yes, got sir. a few like nfr guys that um are going down there like clay smith he'll yep. shoe their horses uh <clears throat> um somebody else and then, of course, Dale Brisby's same caliber of cowboy, and but he was he was uh, shoeing full time, apprentice for a guy down the road, Bruce Gibbs. Yes, sir. Anyway, um, he, I don't know. I'd be interested to see how long it took Corey to get to where he's at. But said he's been doing it about five years. And then I think he worked for him for two years. I think is what he said. Yeah. So, and. I think, you know, going from place to place obviously takes time. He had to drive over here. You got the visiting. So I I don't want to say it's $100 an hour if it took him three hours, you know, because he obviously had to put more time into it between travel and getting somewhere. But, yeah, if you're able to go to two places, you know, it's almost 700 bucks. Yes, sir. But um, that's, that's, that's good money. There's uh there's guys that I know right now that are at uh they go pull up at uh, Outlaw Equine their indicator. Yes, sir. If they're there five days a week and they have horses just tied up to to the rack and those guys uh they are they're there shoeing horses from the time that place opens to the time it shuts down and sometimes they're you know i think vets and there's certain vets that work with shoers and then there's shoers that that fly to different barns and those guys 
are making, uh, I wouldn't say like pocketing in their money, but they're on the same call level for real as a, as a specialist and a doctor, because, Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't think about this. This is, this is, I'm going to bring another aspect to this horses that are competing at the NFR are just like, just like athletes. You only want one person in that same person, consistent work and these bucking horses too. Like guys, I'm going to tell you something. These bucking horses, when it's time for them to get a trim, they, it, it's pretty cool. I've, I've, I've witnessed it several times and it's probably one of the coolest things. Um, but you're dang sure earning every one of those nails and trims and shoes that you put on mm-hmm. because, uh, you're going to figure out really quick and it, and I won't take long. Uh, I will say this. It won't take long whether you realize this is for you or it's not for you because, um, it takes a, I think it takes a very special talented person to be a shoer for a living. And and there's some guys out there that will shoe horses. I know that will shoe horses and also too uh, on their side, like if they want, if they're wanting to retire and transition out, like their mid thirties, I think a horseshoe and, gig is you can make it as long as you want to in this business if you're good but also too like those guys that are transitioning out they're selling equine insurance they're selling they're either insurance salesmen <clears throat> or or adjusters because it, it allows them to be able to continue to make the revenue that they're making and and moving on to another skill set so. yeah that's what i was going to say like i don't think I don't think you have it on your mind to be a full-time farrier for the rest of your days. Mm. It's more of no, a, like, sir. this is a trade that will allow you to be in the industry. you got to do it full-time for a, 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 yes, a, a time, I think, to get to actually to get to the point where you can charge what you need to charge. Yes, sir. But eventually you're wanting to be involved in other aspects of ranching that, Yes, sir. You know, like like Corey, you know, he's managing a ranch and shoes him on the side. Like yes, it's sir. a side hustle. Um, that, that's exactly what I was thinking about because uh, you mentioned the uh, the TCU program, ranch management, the ranch management program. I think that sounds like it's a uh, something that I'd be interested in. Um, just later down the road yeah. after I learn how to shoe. Yeah, they want you to have experienced a little bit of life. It's yes, not sir. very often they let, you know, 18, 19 year old come in there and, and they they want you to have gone to school maybe or had a job for two, three, four years, experienced life and uh and then and it's kind of a process to get in there. I wanna say they only let like thirty five, thirty yeah. six yeah. in there at That's... a time. And they're very selective, but man, I think that I, if I could get into that, I think that would be a really good thing and for me other, to do. And for a lot of people that are listening to this, is also for the listeners, not just you, but uh, for a lot of young guys that are wanting to, um, uh, maybe maybe either you're thinking about uh, going to uh, a shoeing school, or or you're thinking about horseshoeing is you you want horseshoeing to be part of your living or part of your life. There's a lot of horseshoers out there in the summertime because in Texas, let's say the lower part of the of Arizona is a it's a specialty state because that's where people go in the winter time or in the springtime. But for young people that are sitting at home listening to this or wherever, go find if you know a horseshoer, they may not let you they're not just gonna let you grab their tools. Like it's the same thing as interning. They, they're going to want you to come along. You're going to pull shoes. You're going to learn how to pull shoes. You're going to learn how to clean shoes and then how to finish. Um, Gary Coates there in San Angelo, he did close to in the, in the, in the prime of that. I remember working for Larry Coates there, the saddle maker. Yes, sir. He had three kids with him at all times and his daughters, uh, uh, they, that Kirby, she would help pull and finish and clean you know what i mean and so there's a process to it like and once you get around it it, it, you know like i watched a lot of people go through there and learn just by pulling cleaning and finishing and it's uh that right there is that's uh it's it's a little labor intensive and uh but you learn a lot because you're under a lot of horses and you're with them and you get to learn a bunch so how you feel about riding you've been on uh, 
maybe what do we 25 head is about how many times you've ridden either Boone or Bandito or Buckethead. Buckethead or Dale Brisby. Dale Brisby. Yeah. That's not, I I really like being horseback. Um, once I started uh, riding more horses and getting, um, you know, riding more, that's when I kind of realized like, man, I kind of want to really full send it into the into the ranch and and the cowboy side of things rather than the bull riding or the or the rodeo side of things, because uh, that's I just found what I really enjoy is just being horseback. There's so many other trades too, you know, not just shoeing horses like there's you know obviously guys will be horse trainers by trade yes, like that's just what they do is train horses i don't know i think if you're able to check off if you're looking for a job similar to for instance what Corey has you know where you're running a ranch yes sir. if you're mm-hmm. able to check as many of those boxes like you know plenty about horses you know plenty about cows you know how to the inside and the outside of a cow so yes, like sir. you know what she needs nutritionally you know the bare minimum on the vet stuff but then you also know how to get her in the lot you know how to get her in the pen so you've kind of got to check a lot of those boxes people can specialize you know some people yes just shoe horses some people just run ultrasound machines for vets you know they don't even they're not even a vet themselves they just run the ultrasound for some people uh you know anyhow but i think you're 20 you're 20 right yes sir yeah and you you turned 20 like right before you got here yes sir yeah i turned 20 in june man you're lucky i didn't like get wind of your age it before was, you came it was the week before i came here is when i turned 20 if i'd have known you were 19 you probably wouldn't have got to come nice that's no slot at you you're mature and you're an exception there's man there's there's like just a lot of 18 19 year olds just as a rule of thumb they're just not mature enough yet i know i wasn't I was wanting to just and 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 I say rule of thumb like I'm talking about just across the board so if you're yeah. 18 19 listening to this and you're in the Western industry odds are that you're one of the exceptions to okay. the rules yeah. you know because you know I know um, when I was 18 or 19 like I'd been down the road I was going to rodeos by myself like I was handling my own finances and I think I was mature enough to handle an internship for myself, but there's some 18 and 19 year olds that are. I feel like even in just like the time that I've been here, I've just gotten, you know, more. Uh, uh, and I think uh, I think at the at the at that age right there, w- one more thing that I think a lot of young guys, and I'm not saying guys, this goes to gals too, guys and gals. Running, being able to run a ranch. When you run a ranch, uh, I think there is uh, there's fencing, water trough cleaning, everything that goes with it. Understanding how it all works and and scientific part, the financial part. There's a big space right now. Uh, I think in the financial world f- that specialize just in ag related uh, farm and ranch. Yes. Uh, uh, and, and a lot of young people are that they don't want to work on a ranch per se or ride horses or a shoe or anything but they help big ranches manage finances and that's a big thing that makes i think it's one of the biggest things that help make uh, ranches successful and young people have to fill that void um so going back to 18 19 19 year olds donnie tell us about an an 18 year old donnie daytona and what you would have been like in this position oh man I think I uh, I don't know. It's hard for me to say because like I I was a little I ran a lot more back then like when I you know when I say ran I just went places and I didn't really think not like exercise. No, right? I wasn't doing it much of that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like I I just had so much FOMO about stuff that didn't really matter and I mean, I'd looking back I wouldn't trade it for anything cuz I had fun, but yeah. like I was I I still not really I'm still not really a big planner for the future like I just kind of try to live for the day take Worry everything about day by day but I don't know I I I was I was solid enough like I think I maybe could have handled it but I probably would have been wanting to leave a little more than I do now yeah be, just because <clears throat> like I was FOMO right just, like missing out on and that's a real thing like people come out to Winnebago 
And that's a that's that's one reason why a lot of our employees um, I start off, you know, ten ninety nine. Like you're not an employee. Like, hey, hold on, <laughs> we're out in the middle of nowhere. Why don't we just see how this goes for two weeks? Not that you know, I think I might not like you, but you may not like living here. It may have nothing to do with me, the job, what you're doing, but like. Yes. Sir. I mean, I had one girl work for me one time, and she was like, oh, yeah, I came from country, li-, you know, six weeks later. She was back in Fort Worth. It's know? tough, like, especially, like, not knowing any, like, I I don't know anybody here. I never met anybody before, and same, same as him. Like, it's even smaller than, like, people that are from here, like, you know. It's hard for me to, like, you seem very okay with being by yourself, though. Yeah, and I've I've been like that pretty much my whole life any of you ranchers out there that know about that (laughs) but i'm just like i don't know bronx is what's on my mind and i know this is the place to be for that yeah i don't know and that's good i think that that's really awesome that because i I was similar to what you were saying i was live for today forget about tomorrow for but i was also wanting to go announce rodeos yeah but i knew that um I think now looking back at the age that I'm at now, I am super glad that and I'm not saying this to put a damper or burst anybody else's bubble, but like nothing really, really good happened in my twenties to, because, because I was not ready. I wasn't ready. I was not ready to go. And uh, I knew I didn't want to work somewhere per se, but like, like for a long term, like I'm going to stay here forever and retire mm-hmm. here. But like, I wanted to go and experience a lot of, you know, I wanted to go through every time zone back and forth and, and be able to do it on my terms. Absolutely. And I was probably the same way. I was just like, so afraid of getting trapped somewhere. Yes, sir. And like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I see a lot of guys like in their mid thirties and People. stuff that got like eight year old, nine year old kids and stuff. And yeah. I don't know. That just didn't. I don't know. I see a lot of guys I went to school with, and like they just got they got old really quick. And if, I was like, you were seeing the things that I was seeing. Like, my friends were buying houses, having kids, getting exactly. married, and yeah. and like, and there's nothing wrong with no, that. No, there's not. But it shouldn't be um, expected. Yeah, I don't think like shouldn't be pressured into it. Like, hundred percent. I think um, you're both describing a typical rodeo cowboy absolutely Mm -hmm. like that's what like that attitude and 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 it's not really an attitude it's it's kind of more of like a a view on life and like everything is just like i want to i want to i understand and respect full-time employment and people getting serious about 401ks and health insurance but i'm not ready for that i need a decade of my life Mm -hmm. where i'm going to dedicate it to this sport and I'll come back to that later. I tell a lot of people, I went on a 10-year vacation, 10 or 11-year vacation. When I say vacation, not like going to vacation spots because there was times that were really tough. There, there, taking your licks in the sun comes along with the territory of living with that perspective. Absolutely. You know, so getting back to... Where, so where you're at now, like what what is it that has made you comfortable with that transition? How you mean? You were go 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 FOMO at oh. 18, and now you're willing to live in Winnipeg. I can Man, answer that. So like, I see those people that are still trying to live like that, the go 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 FOMO, and then they're like, they don't. I don't know. Like they kind of peaked like back then, and they're still. I don't know. I. Th- How much of that FOMO though is like? you legitimately want to experience it yourself or it's because they're experiencing it it back then it was i i it was i wanted to be there like i i wanted to have a good time but now like i realize like that it it doesn't bring me any value and it's not where it's not going to get me to where i want to be like people people just want things to have like they want to start doing something and just want to be the greatest at it and trip me and tristan were talking about it the other night and he was saying yeah rodeo is not just one big jump it's a ladder you know like it's gonna it's gonna take time and it's gonna take it's gonna take horses and it's it's 
to get there. I don't know. Like I, I think that if I would have got thrown into this sport as an 18 year old kid and like started going on my own, 18, 19, 20 years old, I would have put myself in bad situations just to fail and like been, that's been more worried about like the party inside. Like the, mm-hmm. the that's why I was saying I'm glad nothing good happened in my 20s. It's yeah. easy. I, I it's yeah, easy it's do. still like yeah that part of it still looks pretty fun, but I mean. I don't know. I'm just trying to get. I on. think that's why you know, like, God's timing is pretty perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, just with all of it, like, right. there's no telling. Just like, I mean, we're just guessing what 18, 19 year old would have done. You Absolutely, like to, you yeah. like to hope the best. Yeah, but like, anyway, and maybe this it's perfect timing for you, as far as like moving forward. Are you have you kind of ruled out bull riding? Yes, sir. I've kind of ruled out bull riding, um, just because like. I know what I need to focus on, and if I get, if I, you know, if I break another wrist, now I've broken both of my wrists bull riding. If so, if I break, if I like, you know, <laughs> quote unquote broke. <laughs> Let's see. I want to see these X-rays. <laughs> I was supposed to get one yesterday, but um, so like if I get hurt again, that's just gonna take more time for me to like, you know, not get be- like. Like, I really want to learn how to rope, uh-huh. but that's kind of hard to do when my my arm is in this brace. <laughs> Get a wrinkle. It was easy It was easy for me to realize that I, I didn't want, I don't know. It was easy for me to realize that I didn't want to put the time in. I guess what I'm trying to say is I knew how much effort and time it was going to take to legitimately yeah. be a working cowboy. And, like, I knew that. I could probably get decent at all of those things with how old I am, but I was like, I just want to ride Bronx, and I don't want to, like, set myself back from riding Bronx by trying to do other stuff. A thousand percent. I really feel, too, that um, there comes a point in people's lives in in their 20s. I think 28 is probably, like, the hardest year for me and I think for a lot of other people. What year? 28. Okay. 28 was was miserable. It was tough. Why? Just because I think you're at that point where you're trying to mature, like, uh, in that lifestyle, like, you're trying to mature, but you felt like you've wasted so much time and you haven't wasted any. Mm-hmm. Right. So, like, you, you, you're you getting pulled from both sides. And Donnie, and not not so much you, because you haven't figured it out. You, you haven't experienced that yet. I, I, I can almost tell you where Donnie was when he figured out he wanted to ride Bronx. And when, once that happens, there's a there's a point in life, I think, where you get at that point. <clears throat> you are like, I want to ride Bronx. And this other part that's pulling you, it just ceases to exist. You just yeah. you just go. Yeah. And, and you know. like No, that's 100%. The light bulb yeah. clicks. That's happened for me. Yeah. That I think at 28, me, that's when it happened for me. That happened for me when I stopped getting on bareback horses. You know, that, like, that was one of those <laughs> things that was pulling me figuratively and literally uh-huh. and i was just like i'm done with that you know like and i didn't ride bareback horses that long at all like not even enough to get i mean i got like six cool pictures you know but i enjoyed the hoppers i hated the eliminators and so anyways, so does casey field yeah no <laughs> <laughs> you can't hide the enjoyment that he gets from spurring even the he loves eliminators. it he yeah. loves it and i did not and it took me a while to admit that to myself but there was a point in there Cause where i was just like done because when you're getting on eliminators and you're riding them you're you're making money and you're rodeoing that and you're too. having fun yeah yeah but anyway i think it's really interesting how many freaking calls i get from scammers um no what's really interesting is uh just these two guys coming here and even west like that's it's three completely different mindsets like donnie has because we're making videos right now. We've got a series out called Just Ranching, and we've got a series called Just Rodeo. And Just Ranching is tips, how to saddle a horse, um, how to uh, tie a, a horn knot, little, little stuff like that. We've only done three episodes. Same thing with Just Rodeo, how to tie your bull rope knot, how to do shoot procedure, how to measure your bronc rein. And um, they're two very different things. You know, when you're going to look at how, what we actually do um for the videos it's it's cool to me that you have come here 
and now you're solely focused on ranching yes sir you know and you're we're able to teach you that you're able to learn it you come here you're solely fo- focused on riding bronx and it, it's worked um Wes was kind of in the middle. Wes wanted to do all of it on both sides of the coin. And I think Wes, Wes, and he was okay with the outcome, meaning that he wasn't going to be the greatest bull rider of all time. And it would take him longer to be, you know, he was cool with, it would take him longer to be a top hand because he was splitting his time with all of it. Yes, sir. But, I mean, it's really, ultimately, it's your story. Absolutely. And, and, And what we talked about, but that's the thing. You just got to realize. You got to realize what what the outcome is going to be. Right. You can't. That's exp- exactly what I was about to say. You Remember can't. Jeremy? Yeah. He was talking about that vision you have. Mm-hmm. And most people have a vision of what they want their life to be like, but they're not realistic about what it's going to take to be there. Absolutely. And then all of a sudden they look up when they're 55 and they're like, wait a second, I thought I was going to own a beach house. And they don't. So, like, when you're 20 or 24 or 20, or 36 whatever age you are like if you'll map if you if you know where you want to be you gotta be realistic about how you're gonna get there honestly i try to go <clears throat> worst case scenario when i'm right. when i'm envisioning anything like just you know the i never i never ever expected to be like where i'm at in my bronc riding this soon absolutely not that's what i was talking about you know when it hit when it hits it's like you you you're just you know and, and like i got on my first one back in february and didn't get on another one until may maybe yeah. june mm-hmm. i don't even remember yeah it was probably june it was after late memorial day are you sure i think so dang was it that long yeah it was a long time i mean we didn't want to go you know because we didn't want to have to risk going to the hospital I, yeah i didn't want to go to a hospital yeah. I didn't know what was going to happen when I got back on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and, uh, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm happy, so happy with where I'm at. But, like, obviously yeah. want to keep go, like, going. But 21, Bronx? Yes, sir. Yeah. I think it's 22. I don't know. I think it's We'll 22. go to worst case scenario, 21. Yeah. Worst. So, yeah, that's cool. And it's also interesting that y'all about been on, of course, you're, you're, Y'all been on the same amount of horses, yours being stock stock saddle, his being a bronc saddle. Yes, sir. But anyway, I'm cold. I turned the AC on for cheese. Just because I'm the cold. vent is pointed at you. Don't do not do this right now. Dude, I've been coming in. and You had a hoodie on this morning. Yeah. You look like the Unabomber. Because <laughs> I've been taking cold showers. I I've already a, talked about it on one podcast. I I'm took on, a cold shower this morning, too. I wasn't chilly. I'm on day nine. Yeah, well, that's because you were feeding. You didn't have to come into the uh, warehouse and the be in the office. The vent is pointed right at you. That's why I'm cold. Yeah, you yep. could share. You could point it somewhere else when you turn it on. I don't think you can. <laughs> it's in a window. <laughs> it's a window unit, Cheech. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like the vent or switch like, seats, or go point the vent at yourself. Don't knock over those expensive cameras. I'm not. It's fine. Just how it is. The you're cam- just glad the, it's on. Well, uh, you're the one complaining about. I'm it, not. So. I was complaining about it earlier. I'm not complaining about it. You're the one that started complaining. No, I'm just explaining all no, you that guys. Was a complaint. That was a complaint. I'm explaining mm. all you guys need to be taking cold showers. It is the kitties' titties. <laughs> why? why what's, uh, I'm, so the other day, <laughs> I Dude, decided. We had to get up yesterday morning at 3 a.m. I'm well, driving down the road at 345, and I feel wide awake because I took a mm. cold shower. It just wakes you up. So, and of course, it sucks in the moment but you take a three minute cold shower you're ready to rock and roll you're ready to rock and roll you're ready to ranch you're ready have to you, ranch so I don't know have, did y'all ever did y'all see did you watch my Instagram story my Snapchat the other day I legitimately cleaned out a water trough and then I was like I'm just gonna fill it back up and get in this thing <laughs> when you took the Epsom salt I did I dumped Epsom salt in there cause that kills everything dude how do you get wet with your shirt on I could not like that gives me claustrophobia just thinking about it Really? Yes. Are you going to do that when the filming starts? Probably. Next month? I will. Because we might have a lake day. Uh, um, yeah. Except you can't put Epsom salt in the lake. Well, you can. No. Yeah, that's a good point. You can. I like water troughs because it's a controlled environment, and uh, I don't have to hold on to the edges. Can y'all swim? Do y'all swim good? Oh, I can swim like a fish. For real? Uh-huh. I think that's good. What about you? I mean, I can swim good <coughs> enough. Sometimes I work out. Like swimming is a workout. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if I could say swim like fish. I'm not like an Olympic swimmer, Mm. 
but like in a lake, I can hold my breath for a pretty good while. Hannah's gonna punch me in the face for this, but who? I, Hannah, Hannah who? When you went noodling? Oh. Don't say Hannah who. Hannah Just who? Just try and play it cool. <laughs> I know. Hannah, I was Hannah hoping who? that Donnie did not. He, oh, I'm glad that he didn't do the Sandlot thing. And act like he was drowning so you could go in there and get him. I was like, dang. Don't do it, Donnie. Why didn't we do that? Yeah. Because I respect women. <laughs> she's tough. You she's, opened tougher, your, she's tougher than most guys I know. You'd have opened your eyes and Jeff would have been giving yeah. you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that was loud. But um, some, girls, some girls do stuff on Instagram for the clout, I think. Is that what? Is the what? For the clout. You know, okay. like, just they'll pose like uh-huh like and jeff and hannah told us that like i don't never mind but anyways she that chick is 100 percent legitimate like yeah she's tougher than the rest like yeah doesn't no she's gonna fake do, anything like if this their camera died she'd she's keep still doing gonna it. do it yeah, yeah like, like she, and <laughs> i respect the yeah, crap out of that because there's not a lot of people in this world that still uh, that are like that you know what i mean yeah like, more people yeah i think for me, it was a bucket list thing. Ever since, like, I was a kid and I heard what yeah. New Limb was, there were some people around us that did it. Like, I, it made me nervous just hearing the story, you know, and especially since I didn't know how. So it was a bucket list thing for me. Are um, you guys just in waist deep water or, you know, like, up could, to here? It can get up to your chest. The deepest we were in was, like, chin. Yeah. Where you had to get like this to have your water. And there's, I mean... People were throwing rocks at us just because we were in such shallow water. And there's plenty of people that got to swim way down. But that, to me, like, that's a level of toughness I don't care to explore. I know. Like, I just, it makes me nervous. People die in water, period. Like, Every day. People die in water. A lot more than people die in the rodeo arena. So, so the catfish that you guys did catch, did you guys clean and eat it? No, no we, we threw them all back. Went back, huh? We weren't just we, Donnie and I weren't in a position where we were gonna be like we were at their mercy. Yeah, they were gonna have to help us do everything. They had also driven a long ways. We were all tired. I didn't want to, and I I had a funny feeling he wasn't gonna let me pay him, you know, um, and so then I was gonna be. I didn't want to ask them to do it. I didn't want to. I don't mean like, hey, can y'all help me clean this fish because i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> i hadn't cleaned a fish fish since i was like 14 yeah i mean i could figure it out but regardless like we didn't have any tools we didn't have any nothing yeah but they throw like 99 percent of theirs back but i do want to try some of that blue blue cat i thought they or, i the think flat the flatheads would taste better yeah. i don't know flatheads yeah uh, anyway. i'm not a big fisherman are you a hunter no you're a very short fisherman <laughs> like, um, do you like to dove hunt? I dove hunt some. We'll dove hunt a weekend or two, but duck hunting's where it's at. We, I, I'm not trying to brag or nothing, but we did it a lot. And Nick, are you? Can you legally handle a firearm? Uh, just not in the state of Arizona. Just not there. <laughs> Why? It's not in Arizona. Don't ask. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> Nick, or do, is there something that we need to? <laughs> yeah, I can't be within 20 feet of a school either. <laughs> He's well, just joking about both of them. <laughs> kidding, it's kidding. Way over, it's way over their heads. Just Any inter I feel like an intern too that needs to that has to come that that decides they're gonna come up here. They need to be they need to be handy with the steel. They need to be safe with the steel. You gotta before be they're handy, handy with the steel. With the steel. You know what I mean? Earn your keep. I I I get scared around people that have like never really been around guns. Like, dude, is that gun got bullets in it? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, put it down. Like, yeah, course, we don't really. Obviously, I'm not going to tell anybody they can't have one because, but we just don't do a lot with guns around no. here. Like, um, I know, like, pretty much every intern has, you know, shot them before, hunted or something. Typically, <clears throat> people that come and want to be my intern are in that, you know, industry to some extent. But, uh, yeah, I've ha I have had people work for me before. Like, one time we, we were down at, uh, at the other place before we moved oh, here yes. we were uh i had some guys from california come in and were working for me and uh really handy with a horse um but we were hunting hogs and i step out of the truck 
and I shoot at this hog crossing the, the road in front of us. <laughs> you going to talk about this on camera? <laughs> No, oh, it was the, on the, the road, the ranch road? The ranch road, oh, okay. yeah, not like the county road. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's like, yeah, so we're, <laughs> we're out down Highway 380. This is, <laughs> boom, boom. No, we're on a ranch road. We're coming around the corner to a tank and a uh, lot of trees. And so these hogs come out of the trees we're crossing, and I come out and fire off two shots, and I hear two more right here, and I look over, and this <laughs> guy, <laughs> kid had jumped out of the truck and had a freaking 1911 in the back of his pants and was shooting i was like whoa not gonna work not gonna work like number one i got it it's one pig number two don't ever do i mean like that's just that's crazy are you, like, wow. are you a good shot uh not as good as Leroy. as well are you a good shot yeah he's pretty good what but about you teaching you good shot? i'm pretty good are you yeah I got to hang out with some guys that shot. Uh, they got to, you know, they shoot long range competitions. So. I can't shoot open sights very well with a rifle, but no, I can't do that. That's hard. That's tough. If you can shoot iron sights with a rifle and be do that. accurate, I'm decent with with uh, with waterfowl. Like if the conditions are right, if I got a good gun, if I'm sitting in a good spot, like I can, I can handle my own, and I'm not going to go hungry if they're. But if it's, if it's a not a good gun and they're way out there or i'm sitting weird i don't know i think um i think one of the neatest things to do though is when you do get a chance to go and hunt with some really good guys um is you get to they, they get to figure you out you know before they take you out there and put you uh on whether it's hogs whether it's deer whether it's i think one of the funnest experiences i ever had hunting was going and doing a we stocked uh, a uh, a mule deer outside of monahan's on this pretty cool place but it was like you had to crawl walk we walked like seven miles that day just <coughs> following this big muley around and finally got a shot at him and it was work but um i think uh, the reason i was asking about hunting was like it's summer's coming towards the tail end. We still got August and then September. You know, dove season, season comes around. Yeah. yeah, I haven't hunted in Texas yet. I wanted to. I wanted to kill a turkey here, mm. but it just didn't work out. Mm -hmm. What? Expand just a little bit more. I got to go back to this, Nick, because I was curious about it, and and it's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you today. Uh, so it's going to distract from ranching, but is that the only reason that you stopped riding bulls? Um, <clears throat> I mean, like, yes, sir. Pretty, yeah, pretty much. It had it didn't have anything to do with like breaking your other wrist. I mean, like, it's okay if no. it did. I don't care. I'm just curious because that's what we do every day. We buck bulls. We ranch. Yeah. We're constantly we're filming, and so this is just an opportunity where I've, people may be interested in it. And if that's the reason, that's fine. But if there's a little more to it, because there's kids out there that are wanting to do it. Yeah. And it, it would be interesting for anybody to hear <clears throat> how somebody's opinion might change. Well, I think having the exact same injury on both sides, like uh -huh. literally like when I got this one x-rayed, it was it like Matt, it was like same spot, broke the same way, um, but just on this hand. I was like, maybe this is a sign from, from God or something from God that. Uh, so you didn't break your own me. wrist, did you? You didn't. You I didn't. Like, whack. Like, oh, you no. Know. Um, I just didn't want to get on bulls anymore. <laughs> yeah. I just got scared. Um, but no, that was just that was just like a sign for me that was like, you know, because I started. I really started. If I'm being a hundred percent honest, I started riding bulls to get to like be around the kind of people that like I thought it would put me in a place to maybe work for yep work for cow like you know mm -hmm. learn how to become a cowboy kibble 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 because like I, th I thought that, that was really cool and it looked like something that I wanted to do so like I thought well heck if I go to some of these buck outs and you know maybe I'll meet some people and I can so that was kind of the attitude you had when you got here Yes, sir. And that's kind of what you thought. Yes, sir. Then well, you rode 511 for five seconds, and it seemed like you caught a new interest in it. Well, I mean, it was just, it's fun. I mean, so, it's, 
but then you broke your wrist and it kind of was, reminded you back to what you originally thought yes sir. Is that what happened yes sir because i was like you know it is really it is really fun and like it's it's something that i enjoy but it's not something that i want to make a career out of yeah 100 percent. and I, like i said i felt that same way like for instance against with bareback right with, bear, with bareback or. yeah like i mean there ain't a dang thing wrong with and i, I mean it's rough stock event so I know you said you heard me use the term recreational bull rider, or I didn't. No, I that didn't one. use that. You came up with that term. Um, a recreational bull rider, but it's like that is a that's that's like kind of silly. I think. Yeah, it's kind of that's. It's like because if you're gonna do if you're gonna ride bulls or really any rough stock event, like I think you either go balls to the walls, full send it a hundred percent, or you just don't do it. What I was talking about was the Tony Hawk. What you brought up was like I was talking about Tony Hawk. Somebody because what I've seen in rodeo is there's a lot of guys that they may not have the time to dedicate to try to be a world champion. But the thing about rodeo is you've got so many different other associations. You've even got other circuits within the PRCA or you've got amateur associations. Yes, yeah, sir. So like I've seen a lot of guys that they they set a goal to be the you know their amateur association champion but within that and and that would be what I'm talking about when when I say like you're a skater but you don't want to be a Tony Hawk in that amateur pursuit you still got to be all in yes sir mentally yes sir. like you got to be especially in the rough stock yes sir. because if you're not all in that's when you get hurt Yes, sir. Um, so oh. I think I think that almost will get you hurt. Almost get you hurt. Almost. <laughs> and broke, yeah. because that's where the term recreational seemed to be a little bit. That's what raised my eyebrow about recreational, because you can be a recreational golfer, and it's yeah. fine. You go play on the weekends, right? And nobody's gonna get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Except whoever's down the fairway and you hit them because you. Yeah. But. In bull riding, it's hard to just recreational bull ride because yeah. you might wind up with two broken wrists. And it could get in the way of what you actually want to do. But more importantly, in your case, it will get in the way of your big goal now, which yes, is ranching, sir. be a rancher. So a kid comes to, to Dale. He comes to Winnebago. He gets on two or three bulls. And your loading bulls were there at the beach, and all of a sudden, this kid turns to you and says, I don't want to get on anymore. What are your thoughts? Like, okay, I'm good, I'm good with it, but, but later on, don't. Like, this is your decision right now, or for, for like, you don't want to get on right now, or you don't want to get on ever. Um, I'm 100% good with that. If yeah. somebody tells me that. Yeah. I've had a kid get here, and he was <clears> like, I've been on 40 or 50, and I want to be, like, that's all I want to do. I want to ride bulls. I want to learn how to ranch. I am I'm I live too close to the city. Mm -hmm. I hate my job. I want to come work for you, and I can handle these bulls. I run in a herd bull, and this joker won't nod his head. Won't. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't. I had to come back the next day. And I didn't know what to do about it, but essentially, I mean, I pulled him out of the bucket chute, and I was like, you can't do that because that's the most dangerous part. But what I'm getting at, to answer your question, yeah. I'd much rather 100,000% have Nick say, yeah, man, that's just not the direction I want to go because that's cool. Like I said, I've said it with bareback. The problem is, is when you act like yes. you're something that you're not and you know you're not, mm -hmm. but you want, you know, you want to insta-pick or you want just don't be somebody you're not. or you just yeah. want to like act like you live that life or, yeah you know you want to wear wear the clothes at the bar and just talk about it you know um that's what's not cool an actual real life poser that's what that is somebody that's trying the sport out and then they decide they don't want to do it i mean i see a lot of people the reason that i say that is is because i think in <clears throat> team roping uh, in roping events all the time people that are starting out the same thing um they get to the they get it back into the box and they're just like just 
so tense they're not even breathing they don't realize they hadn't taken a breath until their horse leaves the box and they're down at that end and you're like don't I try to tell some of these uh, young kids for some of you guys that are at the house listen I don't make a living with rope but I go to enough places to rope where you can see people that they don't want to do this mm-hmm. and I, I, my message right now is is like if you don't want to do it it is okay to say mm-hmm. man I, I, this is not me I'm, I'm not that guy but with you in turn saying don't be a poser like there's a there's a big difference but i, I just want to for for a lot of people that because i i get dm'd two or three times a week how do i get started in rodeo how do i get started in team roping how, what what's t- you know like and you get those people there because when you leave the box on a on a pretty high powered head horse it's like being on a top fuel funny car you're leaving with a lot of just torque you're going and for a lot of people, they're not in control at that point. But it, it's okay because you can always scale down, just like bulls. You can you can you can throttle them back. But my that's why I asked you for a lot of people that are watching. Like it's okay to say, man, this is this isn't for me. This is yeah. not what I want to do. And Donnie, have you ever kind of been in a situation where you're like, man, this isn't this isn't me. This well, is I know this I didn't want to ride bulls. Yeah, I I knew that long before I stopped riding bulls. <clears throat> But I wanted to ride Bronx, and I didn't want to piss off Dale. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I, didn't I didn't want him to think I didn't have the fight to do it. I think the way, which is another level of appreciation. Like yes. that was just you. You saw that for some reason is like I don't know. You saw that like I think it's easier to eat crow. That was a stepping stone for you. Mm-hmm. And you saw it as a as a as a means to get to yeah, where you absolutely. wanted to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because I knew I didn't have experience. Didn't have experience on rough stock. Had to get it somewhere. And like figure out what it's like to be on a bucking animal. I like, was in a situation. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. I mean, that's just, I, I mean that's pretty much all I was gonna say. I, but I was in a situation the other day that I, I, okay, I was in a situation where this guy he does not make a living. With a rope, with a horse, or anything. And and this is why I'm saying this. It is my one of my biggest pet peeves. It'll make me mad enough to where it'll bother me enough to where I will just load my stuff up and go home. Mm-hmm. Is the guy that is there trying to be like Rudy and has never entered a rodeo, one, been to a bunch of jackpots, but he's over there. He's the guy that's over there trying to train on everybody. And he's like, man, I, that's just my competitive nature. I want to help everybody. No. Don't try to big league people. I think and I, I, I kind of seen it, you know, a lot a couple years ago in some rough stock events going to announce them. But I think that guy is the epitome of I just literally want to rope them from their two feet and give them a shopping. Yeah. Because I, I don't I don't like that. I don't either. And you see that in almost everything in the world, really. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I, I, it's hard for me. Like, kids will come to me and ask me stuff. And I'm like, I'm not the person to tell you because I haven't done yeah. nothing. Like, you know you're not, I mean? you're okay with saying, I don't know. Absolutely. Because yeah, I, I don't. Like, yeah. and I'm never, like, this is a process for me. Yeah. Like, I, I think there's a point in there where, you know, in the land of the blind, one-eyed man is king, you know, and you just got to, if you're the one-eyed man, it's okay to teach somebody, but when somebody else comes, shows up that's got two eyeballs, you uh-huh. better let him stay, do the teaching. Yeah, stay back and listen. Like, you know? that's, that's, I don't know, I I definitely learned that growing up because my uncles were ruthless. They would just tell me, like, don't say that stuff and pay attention. Like, right, but, but I guess what I'm getting at is, is, like, the guy that has no business trying to teach anybody yeah. that is has no bit like, so for instance, aggravating. if I show up at your roping pen, hmm? I think it's completely acceptable for you to give me roping lessons on how I work my horse in the box. Then Trevor Br- Brazil shows up. You're going to probably stop talking and look over at Trevor and let him talk. It's probably, and that's 100%. what I'm talking about. Like, yeah. When somebody 100%. shows up and Trevor's in the pen and somebody starts training, 
to flex on everybody and show yes. or specifically show Trevor how much they know. That's the ridiculous part, and I think that's the person you're talking about. And vice about. versa. But why what? are you throwing rocks at Rudy? Rudy was the man. Rudy was, but Rudy didn't go back and – here's the, here's the other thing. Rudy though. didn't do what you're talking about. No, no, Ru- Rudy didn't do – exactly. He said yeah, they're trying to act like Rudy. Because, because there's, no, there's, there's nothing wrong with going hard. I will. If you're going to mess up, my motto is mess up 100%. Dude, they called me Rudy in high school. And I was, like, little. Mm-hmm. And I but was you were like, going fast. Oh, man, I was on the practice squad. You know, I was like a freshman in, yeah. in high school. And these seniors and juniors, big. We had some – I mean, I was so little, everybody was big. But anyway, yeah, that's what they called me. I was – I'll go full speed and get knocked out. That's it. That's okay. That is okay. But what I'm saying, too, and also, too, the guy that's – when if Dale was to come or you or any of y'all to come and and rope learn how to rope like I'm gonna say, man I don't know how to I'm I'm not real sure if I'm teaching you the right way let's call somebody or let's watch something to to, to make sure I'm I'm giving you the right advice I I agree that you should uh, I mean I guess if you're gonna make a mistake you should make it at 100 miles an hour but when someone is around and they're trying to teach you there's a difference between listening and hearing like you know what mm-hmm. I mean like. Re- don't just say yes. Like, th- like, really try to analyze what the f- what they're telling you, and because there's a reason to do everything, and it can really m- make or break a process in anything you do. Like, yeah, yeah I-, I don't know. I think Nick, have you found that one thing that you're really interested in and want to learn, and you're you you've just started sponging? Like when Dale goes to talk to you or, or Donnie, like just yes or just, just um, like. Anything that has to do with like horses, yeah, or being handy, like I try to listen to everything. Like when we went to go wean the other day, like everything that uh, all those guys that are like pretty handy would say, like I was trying to pay attention and kind of think about like what they were saying and why they were doing something a certain way. Did and you ask questions? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, um, and then just like. Like the older, there was an older gentleman there, and just like, I would try to listen to just whatever he said, and um, you know, because obviously he's been doing it longer, you know, been doing it the longest. So like, what he says is probably, you know, mm-hmm. there's there's been a lot. There's of, a reason why. There's he's a saying reason. It. Yeah, there's a reason why he's saying it. So, um, well, Nick, excited for you. Once you know your direction, that's a fun feeling. Um, so we're going to go around the horn I'm going to start with you Nick why don't you give some life advice life advice shut up and listen I like it Donnie I don't know you never have life advice I know because I gave it all out while we were while we were talking just uh, be you don't try to be someone you're not. It's a ladder, Thank not a too. jump. It's a ladder, not a jump. I like that. Go ahead, Cheech. Learn as much as you can. Be young. If you're wanting to be in this lifestyle, just go in and uh, go at it full speed. Don't don't try to make I the had process a faster. Autograph sheet today that I signed. And uh, the person said, this person got hurt and can't rodeo anymore, and they need help moving forward. And so I said, on to the next one. And what that means to me and has always meant is that when you're on to the next one and you're, you've got the windshield in front of you, your rearview mirror makes up about 3% of the view of your windshield. And that's about how important what behind you is, about 3%. So what's in front of you and where you're going is 90 is of 97% importance to where you're at right now. And I'm not saying what what what's happened isn't important at all. It's just when you compare it to where you're going, that's what's really important. Yeah. And so that's really deep, man. On to the next one. On to you the next. You didn't know one. that's what DB meant when he said on to the next one, did you? Yeah. Also, we just released new caps, T-shirts, backpacks. I don't do many plugs. I don't do pre-roll or mid-roll, but here's a post-roll. If you're interested in Rodeo Time caps, Daleware, 
backpacks. I know school just start or is going to start soon. Check it out, DaleBrisby.com. Uh, I'm going to go post this right now. That way you can, if you're listening to the podcast version, we're going to do free shipping through this weekend, Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday. Uh, it's July 24th. So, Brown um, ribbon. Yeah. I'm just, just, I'm just trying to let them know. Core. Like, I don't do that very often. I but know. occasionally I got to let y'all know because that's, that's what keeps the lights on here. That's why we get to do what we get to do. Yeah. So, the most comfortable T-shirt you will ever wear, guaranteed. They are pretty comfy. I'm just glad that AC's on. That's comfortable enough for me. Also, take a cold shower. It's going to change your life. Mm. Well, Dell, where to come? To a store near you, or right here at dellbrisby.com. Pow, pow, and on to the next one.